Today I'm back in Greece, at the Action for Wildlife Center, a place where wild animals are rescued every single day. Here they treat injured birds and mammals and prepare them to return to the wild. Hello. Hello. Oh my God, how, how hard is this one? Hello. Hello. My name is Noah. What's that place? Uh, it's a wildlife rehabilitation center. I'm Frosio Parcharidou. I'm a biologist ornithologist. I work in the rehabilitation center uh, Action for Wildlife and uh, I'm responsible for uh, all the animals here. Can I help something, something here? We need to wait some birds to take the weight and to check if they are okay to be back in the nature. So we need to go inside and take the weight of the doves. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's go. Action for Wildlife is a non-profit organization run by a team of biologists, veterinarians, and volunteers. They take in injured storks, owls, hawks, anyone who needs help. Here the animals recover and get ready to return to the wild. Come Noah. So we will take the doves from here. We put them mm -hmm. in the fabric so not to be stressed. Yeah. Because uh, wild animals can die from the stress. This one weight, 165. Can you hold the bird? Yeah. Thank you. Like that. I need to remove my gloves now. I need to check the ring because you put some uh, rings with numbers so we know Wait. which one is. Yeah. Hold it there on the table. Okay. I need to find the card. In my first year of the School of Biology, I saw an announcement for a uh, releasing back to the wild animals. I came to the rehabilitation center. It was uh, the, the, the team of the people, um, their knowledge and their uh, attitude and the willing to help the wild animals uh, that make me choose this rehabilitation center and in general this in my life. So this one had a broken leg. It was cut by a cat. It went to the cage on May and it took like uh, so many months to become better and it can fly properly. It was 125 grams, now it's 165, so it is very well and we can release it. Hold it again. Again broken leg. Oh, this one, I don't know, I need to see the, the card. I need to see the number. It's very beautiful. This one, it was just baby. So put no. it back there okay. uh, with the fabric later. Yeah. Okay. Put it in the box. Oh, great. Thank you. And now some doves here. Yeah. You know, they're quite big, a little bit smaller than normal people. <laughs> yeah. I need to check this one. You see here, new feathers are growing. Yeah. The whole uh, rehabilitation uh, work, it needs ra really a lot of specific knowledge because you need to know all the biology of every species and how to behave to them and what is their behavior and what is normal, what is not. So you need to read a lot, to study a lot. Rehabilitation for people or for animals, you need to be uh, very um, uh, updated. Can students do that? Yeah, of course you need to have some people that they have some experience and then you learn from them. We learn also from people from abroad and you can study, you can learn. These birds have rings. We usually ring them, but now this we will not ring them. We ring most of the birds that we release. What happened with this dove? Uh, the, this dove was caught by an animal, we don't know what animal caught it, and it had wounds in the body. Most of the doves have the same problem. <laughs> it had also wounds in the body. 
from a cat. One was just a baby, an orphan, and the other, uh, it had a broken leg. It hit somewhere and had a broken leg. I think they are ready to be released. I think here is nice. You can leave them down. Okay. And when you are ready, uh, you open the box. Okay? Yeah. You just open the boxes. Sometimes they need their time to understand what is going on. We actually, uh, here is mostly volunteering. We have uh, very few employments. Uh, the 99%, I will say that each vo volunteers work. We have some programs yeah, like European Solidarity Corps and Service Week from France that they give opportunity to young people to come here, stay here, they, we have rooms for them, and even for a year if they wish, and uh, learn about wildlife and rehabilitation, and of course help the whole project. We have two volunteers that they are children, of course with the license of their parents, and they help here a lot. Like one of them is almost every day here. You can try to catch, yeah, and they will leave. And one of them is sitting on a wire. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, quail is domestic. No, uh, the quail that we have here is not domestic, it's a wild one. And this is a starling, the spotted one. But why these turtle doves and doves who don't release. They are not ready yet. They don't have good feathers or they don't fly well enough. To, to, to release them, we want them to have uh, perfect feathers and to fly very well so they, they will be able to live outside. Maybe we can uh, try to feed somebody. Mm -hmm. During winter, we have mostly raptors, like bizarchs, and during summer, we have uh, many storks, many swifts, like uh, 350 and more swifts, and then um, falcons. Um, I think this is the, the most common. Wow, how many castles you have? I think they are around 20. No, you put pieces on the wood. You have oh. the clean glass and you put the new and I take the old. Put also as high as you can. Yeah. Maybe we can put some meat there too. Yeah, yeah. put there. What happened with this? With this, mean... one, this one doesn't fly well yet. Okay. It had broken wing. Oh my God, for here. And the team also teaches people where protecting nature is everyone's responsibility. People found the birds or the, the herded animals uh, from uh, all over North Greece and uh, then bring it to us. Either they send them by bus because we have a cooperation with the bus. Either they bring it by, by themselves. There is the clinic examination, uh, the, the medical care, and then the aim is to release them back in the wild. Depending of uh, their problem, uh, they go in a specific room or a place. Oh, there's a rabbit! Yeah. So we need to keep a bit slow our voices so we don't bother them, we don't make them stress. Froso understands what each bird needs from the very first moment. She explains that it's important for wild birds to keep their wildness because too much contact with humans can put them at risk. Forso treats the birds with such care, respect and understanding. You know that some of them trying to go out? Okay, Noah, can you catch this one and put it here? Yeah. 
Of course, in this box, you can, yeah, thank you very much. Some of them, they are ready to go out, but we cannot release all of them every day because we need to have good weather. I have a question. Yeah. What happened with this bird? Aha, uh -huh. this bird is a potted fly catcher and he has uh, neurological problems. It's a baby. Okay, yeah, they are enough, I think. Thank you very much. We will okay. feed that one, yes. Yeah, I will do that because it's kind of difficult to feed them. This is a swift, baby palin oh. swift. Can I try to feed it? You need to put a bit more in the mouth. Okay. Now, yeah. It's not easy with birds to feed. <laughs> Well, for me, because I'm specialist in the swift, this is also my personal uh, love and specialization, uh, I'm going about them. Swifts uh, nest in the buildings and there are renovation of the buildings and this is a huge problem because they close their nests. So the swifts are coming from Africa every year to reproduct here and they cannot find their nest. They are very special birds because they, they nest in the same little hole every year. I noticed that um, if they lose this nest, for the next years they continue to, to pass in front of this nest and trying to enter again. So probably they lose also a second year of um, reproduction. Some of them storks had uh, uh, heat in electricity lines and the burn their skin, also their feathers, and I think their feathers grow up again. Also, you know, there is a period of the year that they change their feathers. Look, there is a nest. Yeah, it is a stork nest. Uh, this year, for the first time, storks that live from this cage, they built a, a nest there. And they had two uh, baby storks, and the, two weeks ago, they left the, the nest already successfully. Now doves <laughs> use this nest. What happened with this wing? Unfortunately, when they hit in the electricity line, some of them, they break the, uh, their wings or where they fall out of the nest. So you see, those uh, storks have a ring. The black, see that stock, it has a ring. Most of them, we ring them. So when they leave the cage, we, and somebody take a photo of them, we know that they travel and they are okay. But why you don't do that with doves? Uh, we do sometimes, but uh, we cannot have every day um, a ringer, a person that rings, because you, you need a special license to ring, and we cannot have every day here a scientist like that. Do the storks fly away from this? Yeah, all of the storks that you see outside, it's from here, and the seagulls go out too. This is the reason why the cage is open. We need to be open. Uh, because so they fly away and back. Yeah, to fly away when they feel ready and to come back to it if they don't find food. So this is a safe way to release birds. It's a soft release. They can uh, come back and go away. Okay. Oh, here's some storks too. Yeah. Here are the baby storks. Those that get born this year. And we put them separately because probably the adults will hit them. 
so we we want them to be alone. All also, the girls. Yeah, also the girls are all babies from this year. We put them here for more protection, but it is still open. They can go again wherever oh. they want. Yeah. I have a question. Why this stork is walking next to people? Because they know that they are safe here, uh, but they will go. I mean, they will not be forever here. They go usually when the migration uh, starts, and some of them, they already went for migration. So yeah, they will live eventually. You see, it's hunting. Yeah, it is eating the libellulas, you know, the, the dragonflies. Look how big is this feather. <laughs> what kind of duck is this? They are shell ducks. They are baby shell ducks. They are babies, they are not ready to fly, and uh, we don't do soft release for them, because... Um, hawks can come. Hawks can come, yes, and eat them. So when they are ready, we take them in the suitable place. Depends on the season, because if it's not the proper season, and if hunting are around, we cannot release them here. We are part of the wildlife. Animals and people is not two different things, we are the same. We are part of the world, so we need to protect everything. It's like uh, they are uh, brothers or sisters. <laughs> For me, it's um, amazing to see how a nature bird exists to life, exists to live. And uh, it's very, very amazing how they can recover from a very serious wound and be back to the nature. I feel really happy that I got to see real kindness again. People with huge hearts who give their time, energy and knowledge to protect and take care of nature. And for me, that's a really important example.